Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how to make an even consistent weld on your projects. We're gonna really take our time and I'll just walk through everything I'm thinking about uh, every step of the way from setup and prep, clear through the actual weld. So I'm gonna be welding on some quarter inch thick steel and we'll run a fillet weld in a T-joint, but the principles will apply to pretty much any weld you're gonna to wanna to run. Um, you know, I was at the steel yard not too long ago and they had a big pile of this uh, flat bar laying on the ground and uh, just little pieces and I asked them and they'd miscut a whole order for a customer and I made them an offer and they sold it to me cheap. I grew up using abrasive saws so it's always crazy that you can just touch this right after you cut it. So this flat bar has some light mill scale on it uh, right here just from the manufacturing and I'm going to strip that off. What I use to do that is one of these purple strip discs um, right here uh, on an angle grinder and I'll put a link to these in the description. I think they work well because they don't really gouge into your steel um, but they do remove the mill scale pretty well. Go ahead and flip it over and just uh, do both sides. So I just have this aluminum plate I've been using for a long time to protect my welding table uh, when I'm running these demos. Now this has actually warped quite a bit over the years. I mean, it'll rock around a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Uh, so I'm gonna clamp this down. And while this isn't necessarily gonna apply to you with the plate, um, clamping your project in place can be pretty important because if your project's moving around, it's really hard to uh, get a nice consistent weld. I'll go ahead and connect my work clamp directly to this plate here and ground through it. I generally try to avoid grounding through my welding table now that I have one with a coating on it. You can see all these white marks here where the coating is kind of etched off. Um, pretty much any table with a coating will do that if you ground through it. That's from grounding to the project. Now I use this to weld steel on. I have a separate plate that I use for aluminum so that I don't transfer steel uh, to aluminum projects. I'm using a 300 amp MIG welder today, but I'm not going to run it over 200 amps. Um, and I have a 035 or 0.9 millimeter wire loaded in here. And this is gonna be really good for quarter inch. If you're running 030 wire, that's going to spatter a lot when you start pushing the wire speed and amperage that you need for quarter inch. So 035 is a better choice. 045 also, or 1.2 millimeter, would work uh, good on quarter inch. But uh, we'll stick with 035. I'm using a mixed gas, 75% argon, 25% CO2 and my gas flow rate is right around 25 CFH, and this setup's gonna be really good for short circuit MIG. Now let's take a look at settings. I think most people run their welds colder than uh, ideal. I actually have a job set in here um, from some quarter inch I was welding the other day, so I'm gonna recall that, and this is 375 inches per minute and 21 volts. And so that right here is going to output about 200 amps. So this is something you could do with a lot of 220 amp uh, class machines, 200 amp class machines um, with this 035 wire. And I think this runs really well without having to do a lot of manipulation and risk having a cold weld. This video format is a little bit of a departure from the highly produced videos that I have been making with a lot of voiceover and cuts. Um, I like it better because to me it feels like we're hanging out in the shop and they're a lot more enjoyable to make, but I'd love to know what you think, so let me know in the comments. Okay, so I'm gonna put these together in a T-joint right here. When you're practicing fillet welds, you can do them in a T-joint like this or in a lap joint, and it's worth practicing and knowing how to do both because they'll both come up on projects, but we'll just do a T-joint today, and then I'm gonna put my tack right on each end so it doesn't get in the way of the weld itself. And my wire is sitting a little bit long right now for short circuit MIG, so I'm just gonna clip it off. I always keep some of these welpers right here next to my weld area. It's pretty handy. Now notice just from that tack how it 
uh, distorted and opened up the joint here at the end. So I'm going to need to hold that down while I tack the other side. Now when I'm tacking these, I just take my gun nozzle and rest it right here on the table. And that lets me line everything up before I actually pull the trigger. So I'll hold this down. Now here's a hack for you. You take the whelpers, put them in a hole in your table, then put the MIG gun hanging right off of them. There are a few things that I'm paying attention to here um, on this weld. One of them is my gun angle. So I'm coming in 45 degrees into the joint and I'm using a slight push angle here. You can also use a drag angle with short circuit MIG and it'll work just fine. Um, but I like to use a push angle whenever I can because you also use that with other processes so I get used to it. Also, I'm using my non-dominant hand to help support the gun, but I'm just using it as a slight uh, rest. I'm not planning it hard. What can happen if you're really resting hard on here is that it gets stuck and then you start tipping and rolling like that and that throws off your angles and it'll uh, make your weld inconsistent. So just a light guide like that. Most of the weight is supported here by my right hand in my case. So I'll run a dry run along here, make sure that I have good positioning, make sure that I can see up in front of the joint and that it's even and then go ahead and make my weld. Now it's game time and during the weld there are three main things to pay attention to. I call these the elements of technique. I want to have consistent angles, a consistent stick out or the distance from my contact tip to my work and a consistent travel speed. Now the travel speed controls the size of the weld. See if I travel more slowly I'm going to get a larger weld and in this case I really am traveling uh, slower than I should and I can see that clearly now so we'll run another one but first let's take a look at this one. So as I was welding I could feel myself slowing down and maintaining that consistent travel speed and angles is the key to real consistency. And so I want to try another one and see if I can't maintain that same speed all the way along. Now here on the back side, notice how much faster I'm moving. Once again, paying attention to my stick out, my angles and travel speed to keep them consistent. But uh, I'm moving much more quickly. That keeps me up on the leading edge of the puddle, which is only going to help with penetration. And it's giving me a more appropriate sized weld. But on top of that, I'm cutting down my weld time by a lot, which if you're doing a lot of welding, that's a big deal. And it also saves on wire and gas without sacrificing a lot of strength because that extra material is just piled up there, not really doing a lot for you. So here, if we look at the finished weld, this one is much more consistent and a much more appropriate size, honestly, than this over here where it was really building up. So uh, this is a good example of, you know, what can happen if you're you're just taking your time right here. Uh, let's check the size of this weld. So 3 sixteenths of an inch is a pretty good size for a quarter inch uh, thick plate, but it depends on your joint design. So this is a gauge to measure fillet weld size, and it's really close to 3 sixteenths of an inch uh, on the leg on both the top and bottom. Now, you also have to check through the middle because if it's sunk in uh, real low, then you won't have enough material in the middle for your throat. But since this has a little bit of a crown, as most short circuit MIG welds do, uh, that's not an issue. Here at the end, there is a little bit of a crater that I could give one more zap to. It's built up because I paused at the end to fill in the uh, crater for the most part, but one more little zap would fix that. A little bit of spatter, but overall, I'd be happy with this on a project. So just to recap, running a nice even weld doesn't really require anything more than doing the basics well. Uh, make sure to prep your material, use the right size wire and a good hot setting. You shouldn't need a whole bunch of manipulation or other complicated things. Just keep a nice consistent travel angle and uh, travel speed throughout the joint and you should be good. Now, this sounds a lot easier than it actually is. And I've put together some online courses that walk you through the whole learning process step by step in a way that isn't overwhelming so you can learn faster. That's how I support these videos. So that's linked in the description below. I keep them as affordable as possible. And once again, uh, this is a little bit different format, but I'd like to move more in this direction because I'm kind of tired of hiding behind all the edits and I'd rather, you know, have something that feels a little bit more, um, 
personal, like we're hanging out in the shop. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this type of video. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.